Good morning, plant people. It is October 9th, and spooky season is upon us. Here's a couple of my decorations. I have some, uh, I have this skeleton here with uh, some new skulls with a, looks like a rat and a bug inside of the eyes. And um, here's the same thing on this side. The plants inside, the three hedges, are uh, Mexican heather. They have little purple flowers on them. And this white one over here is a verbena, white um, endurescape verbena. And this long spiky one is a Victoria white salvia. The purple stuff is uh, trade scanthia. And I just showed you a couple of little uh, red yuccas I have in there. Behind the front bed is uh, my pumpkin. It's a cat with a moon on a fence. <laughs> and uh, there's a purple cone flower there. It is in bloom in October. Weird. First year plant, but it's how it is here in this long growing season in zone 8B. Southeast Texas. There's another cone flower back there. Just planted in the spring. Uh, my gomfrina was cut all the way back to the pot and has totally recovered. Here is a giant zinnia, red. So pretty. I just love this color. It's the only zinnia I have left. Well, I love, okay, I have one in the backyard that uh, came up, but it's the only one that I have that's flowering. And this is the gomfrina. You can see the little flowers inside the purple bracts. And my uh, pink lemonade blueberry is alive. I thought it might be dead. I planted it in here just to hold it, and it has some new growth in there, so I am happy about that. Some of my amaryllis I have kind of moved around. Um, I wanted it to look a little bit more filled out and even, So, um, and some of my agapanthus were in the middle. I moved them towards the edge. And my lantana, I, I don't know why it looks so rough right now. I think it, because uh, maybe it's like 87, 90 degrees in, during the day still, and then it gets cold at night. I don't know. But over here, I have some little black-eyed Susans, just beautiful. And I do have some milkweed and some lead plant and some liatris here. And, um, and right here I have some salvia vista mix. I had to cut it down to the pot because it had scale insects. Uh, treated that with just some alcohol spray and um, cut it all the way back. It, it didn't kill the plant, it just made it look like really rough. So cut it all the way back. Okay, we're in the backyard, we're gonna start over here uh, because the sun. Uh, I'm gonna try to dodge my shadow. But uh, here's kind of a pan across the yard in the morning. It's about 8, eight or 8.30. And uh, over the weekend, I went to my county's Master Gardener's uh, fall plant sale. And I uh, got a couple of plants. This right here is one of them. It is a um, Lobelia cardinalis, cardinal plant. It's got some, it's got a bloom coming up. You can see uh, when it'll be a very long bloom spike with some red flowers on it that the hummingbirds love. It's a, it's a native plant. And um, I moved my hosta over there. You can still see the hole. I'm gonna replace it with uh, maybe a hydrangea. And I put it right here. I think it'll get a little bit uh, more shadow there and uh, it is a shade plant so hopefully it'll make it and um, I have another hosta here that my neighbor um, gave me another one there and two more over on this side with some this one hasn't made new leaves yet but it's getting there and this one has a new leaf oh I forgot there's three there's there's two there those are new from my neighbor. He gave them to me. And uh, let me see. This one, this big monstrosity, is a native Texas spider lily. Really super pretty foliage and uh, really pretty blooms in the spring. 
and this is my milkweed. This one is rose milkweed. This is a little blue stem plant, uh, grass. And over here is Sunday, Von Ween. And um, at the plant sale, I also got some Phlox Puniculata. And it is the John Fanick uh, variety. Hoping it does right good right here where it doesn't get uh, afternoon sun, but it gets plenty of uh, morning sun. Well, I mean, it's eight o'clock and you can see that the sun will be here in about an hour. So it'll, it gets a couple of hours of uh, sun in the day, but not in the hot afternoon. The elephant ears are blooming. And I think these are supposed to make seeds too, but um, I don't know. They sometimes they just fall off. So we'll see. And the mist flower, uh, it's a little bit wet outside, so they're kind of flopped over and stuff, but they're doing great. Butterflies love it during the day, and uh, the bees, not so much, but the, the moths and butterflies, they do. Butterflies, they do. This is, this is my button bush. It is a native, and I'm hoping to get some buttons on it next year. Okay. This right here is next to the mist flower, and it is an American salt marsh aster or a lawn aster. Pretty awesome. And this is a daisy that I rescued from the corner. The mist flower is just so, it's just a floppy mess sometimes. I'm going to get in here and clean it up a little bit and uh, kind of move some of it forward. This, this bed is gonna be expanding in the next couple of months or weeks. And uh, here's a shot of the ladder box, the coleus, little bumblebees around it. This is one of my favorite areas in the garden at this time of the year, I just love it. Here's the red yucca seedling in there with some uh, Mariner's Kalanchoe and down um, with some succulents. This is a, uh, these are rose milkweeds and some hibiscus. The passion flower is really showing off this fall. These haven't completely opened because it's too early. But I'll show you a photo of uh, one of the blooms from the other day. This is Monarda fistulosa. These are irises, um, the white ones. And this tall plant. This one is a Baptisia. This is a native shrub with blue flowers in the legume family. Uh, this is the only other zinnia I have than that one in the front, and it's a purple one. And uh, Morgomphrina. These are daylilies. And some Colleus. Doing good. Um, let's see. This little blue stem doesn't look super great. Um, I think it's getting too much shade. I'm not sure. My crepe myrtle, doing good. Looks nice. Native evening primrose. I have some amaryllis there. Uh, some more primrose there. And an iris over here. I finally cut my Cosmos down. I, they were just too frustrating and not pretty at all. So they had to go. And uh, we did get rain last week. And um, I don't know if that's why these are turning brown or if uh, they're just done for the year. But uh, they were very pretty when they lasted. And I think we might be getting more blooms up 
there. I don't know. But uh, there's amaryllis here. There's uh, iris, amaryllis, cosmos that I cut. Um, this is a lantana and it is blooming. And right here, a ornamental pepper came up. Same here, ornamental pepper. Um, this is a day lily that I had moved from uh, the front yard, I believe. And uh, my neighbor also gave me some more purple coneflower. So I planted it right here. Um, this is one of the plants that I got at the plant sale. It is a Texas star, um, hibiscus. And uh, this one's, uh, this is a white one. I've never seen the white one. I've only ever seen them in like a maroon red. So it'll be interesting to see that one bloom and hopefully it does. Oh, you can see a spider right there next to it. Isn't that cool? Um, let me see, there's some iris, there's some mariners calanchoe in there. Um, these right here are datura or deadly nightshade or moonflowers, whatever you want to call them. And they are native to like West Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, and they bloom at nighttime and they attract those uh, like hummingbird moths and uh, sphinx moths and things like that. And I did, I did the unthinkable guys. I cut my sunflowers back before the birds could eat the seeds. I know, I know, I know. But, you know, I left the stems up for the bees and I feel like it looks better because the bees are going to be able to lay their little um, eggs and stuff inside the stems if they need to. Um, it's just the bee, the birds are not going to be able to get the seeds. And um, to make up for that fact, I'll just feed them again next year. This right here is a native um, Yopon holly or uh, Ilex vomitoria. I do not know if this is a male or a female because it's so small, so I don't know if it'll have berries or not, but it will be an evergreen shrub. Well, it could be a tree if you wanted it to be, but I want it to be a shrub. There's some, sp this right here, it looks like grass, is spiderwort. It's a um, same same thing right here. Uh, it's a native um, flower. It's uh, it, it only blooms in the spring, but uh, it is a uh, host plant for some butterflies and such. A couple more uh, cone flowers here that my neighbor gave me, some seedlings of. And uh, yesterday I went to the grocery store and they had these dianthus on sale. I think they were like $6. Dianthus barbatus, dash violet. It's the variety there. So I think it'll give this little area right here a little bit of color uh, in the fall, next year and this year and in the spring. This These are cold weather plants, so it, it should give some color, um, you know, while everything else is kind of dormant. My blanket flower here is putting out some, blood, some buds. This is two daisies. I think they're pink, but I don't know. Um, I planted some amaryllis right here. Uh, had a whole had a whole lot of uh, seed seeds seedlings over there in the uh, in this far bed, and I just moved some of them over here to kind of give a backdrop to the oleander, which is putting on new growth. Be, I don't see any blooms. It's probably not going to bloom again until next year, but. It does look good. It's supposed to be evergreen, but we'll see if it gets down to like 20 degrees, if that's true. Um, all of this is just like a native wildflower kind of mix. It looks to me like it's probably some kind of primrose or, um, you know, little um, buttercup type flowers. This is a purple salvia. This is a pride of Barbados. Still got new growth going on. Um, I think I might have, this is not native. This is native to like Mexico or um, a zone like 10 or 11. Um, so I'm probably gonna have to cover that one this year because I lost one last year in, in the freeze. Uh, this is Greg's mist flower as well. It, this one came from a cutting over in that over there. 
and that one gets morning sun and then in probably like 10 o'clock it, it gets no more sun for the rest of the day well i mean indirect sun and this one gets the really hot afternoon sun and they both seem like they love life so i think it i think you could probably plant that anywhere this is my pink moly grass and i am happy to report that we are getting blooms um here's another one here so soon they will have more of these uh spikes and the it'll look like a little cloud of pink puffs uh from that and i i think this one might flower we'll see but it is the same plant i mean the same kind of plant that is same species this is a prickly pear cactus there is a salt marsh aster here but it kind of gets lost in the in the mulch and stuff whenever it has flowers on it though you can really see it Over on this side is another ornamental pepper and another purple salvia. This is a Maurice Utrillo rose. It does have some buds. The sunflower that I cut back earlier this year. This is a basil. That's my bat face kufia underneath. You may remember that I uh, transplanted it and, it and I cut it all the way back and uh, it looks like it's going to recover. Hopefully it makes it through the winter. Um, over here I have another milkweed. It looks like it's... Um, they sometimes look like this in the fall because some bugs eat them but it will be back next year. This is my mandavia. It seems to be doing okay since the transplant. We got some of this foliage that's not looking like super great, but up here we got new growth and new buds, so good. And my marigolds have uh, sprouted to life. Um, I keep all these little cages or whatever here because my dog will come over here and he barks at the people walking along the sidewalk and he will trample everything. So I just kind of keep a little cage here to keep him from doing that. And here is Amaryllis. There's a Baptisia down there. Some Iris. This is a, those are stems from a, from a um, Cosmo that I cut back. And that's the little blue stem grass. That's another cut back Cosmo. I don't know if the bees will use these stems, but um, I'm gonna leave them just in case they want to. And over here, this is the red maple. I don't know what happened there. Um, this is another blanket flower. Really super great native, and it's been blooming since March, or maybe April. And I uh, got some agapanthus. I had five agapanthus, and now I only have three. So the two over here, there and there, um, are not coming back up. I don't know if it's because of dog urine or if it's because, um, maybe it's too, I don't know. I have no idea. I do not know. But there's a daisy here and a daisy here and those are making it. So I don't know. My, uh, crepe myrtle is coming to life as well. It, the heat of the summer really did a number on this one. It's, the leaves are just... Uh, it's just tired. I think it's ready for winter. But look at these blooms, though. They're just great. And this is, uh, this is another um, Gomfrina. They say it's pink, but it looks red to me. And uh, you can see those little yellow flowers. The red part is just the, the bracts, but each little yellow dot is an individual flower. I think I have right here is a, um, the first signs of the Lacoris that I planted around. So yay. And right here, 
I have a red yucca coming up. And down here, I have some black eyed Susans coming up. Okay, now we're gonna fight with the sun. I moved some amaryllis to here. This is my plumbago. I think it's about to put on a whole new flush of blooms. You can see all these little buds on it. It was struggling during the heat, but you can see that I think it's making a recovery. Here's another red yucca here from an old uh, skull cap that I had um, that had died. I had tried to rescue it from the uh, clearance section, but it didn't make it. But a, a red yucca did make it. There were some seeds there. And that was from there. But uh, this is a Budlia. I'm putting on some new growth since the cooler temps. This is my rock rose. It was blooming the other day, but I don't have one open right this minute. Uh, but you can see the buds are coming. And uh, I'll show you a photo of the uh, whenever it does, when it was open, um, I think yesterday. More blanket flower buds. Here is another Budlia, and it is about to bloom. And here is another rock rose. You can see all of the, um, these are from yesterday. This one will be open a little bit later today. Um, the flowers only last one day, but doing good. I uh, removed some of these ditch lilies and I have decided that I'm going to remove all of the ditch lilies. And I'll show you where I planted the, the ones that I removed right here. When I get something to replace them here and here, um, then that's when I will remove them. But here I had uh, some little blue stem grass in a container and uh, it doesn't like that. It wants to be in the ground. So I planted it there. It looks a little worse for wear today because I just re I just planted it. Um, and it was like really bushy and stuff, but uh, some of it got broken um, and, but it will recover very much by next year and it will be nice and full. This is another salt marsh aster. Some people call them lawn asters, but uh, they're really pretty whenever they're blooming. Um, the foliage isn't that great and uh, they kind of they kind of spread out and it look kind of lanky. That's why I planted them close to the blue stem so it would kind of give it a little bit of a filler. And then, um, you know, the grass has no flowers, so I think those little flowers, flowers will kind of make it uh, you know, look a little bit better. And this is the Vitex tree. It's, um, it's doing great. There's uh, nothing wrong with it. It grows fast. I love it. The bees love it. If I could say one thing, I just, I think that the buds, they just stay on like forever and ever. And, uh, I wish it would... I think it's probably because it's a first year plant, but uh, I feel like it's not flowering that much, but we'll see next year. My Indian Hawthorne Clara variety is putting on new growth. So uh, I'm really excited about that. It has some really sweet little white flowers in the springtime that uh, turn into these little um, these little berries right here, like you can see, and, uh, the birds don't really like them, uh, too much, but, uh, they do, they do kind of give it some interest in the garden, and, all right, and it is the season for the little cages for the dogs, because, um, like I said, people walk here, and I did have, like, some bushy zinnias right here, but now that, that since I've removed them, uh, the dog just kind of, he just runs right here. There he is, right there. But he runs there and he tears up everything that he steps on. So I just put these little things here around my plants just so, so he doesn't step on them. Because as you can see,
that is a ma uh, a massive footprint. So, uh, yeah, these are this. There's a border of daylilies, not the orange ditch lilies. They're regular daylilies that will be flowering. And uh, these are Shasta daisies. This is a purple fountain grass. This is a uh, clustered bush mint. Some people call it musky mint. And uh, this one is a powder that my neighbor gave me this. He also went to the, uh, the plant sale for the Master Gardeners. And it is a dwarf powder puff tree. It's gonna get these red, um, almost mimosa looking flowers, but they're, they're like bright red. I have some Anarda in there. I have some Obedient plant in there. And this right here is a Clematis. That's this plant right here. And it's a climber, so it'll go on there. And let's see, let me try to dodge my shadow. Okay, so right here is a uh, Crinum lily. It bloomed not too long ago. There's another one there. This is some rose milkweed. Hang <coughs> Sunday. You all right? Maybe get out of the garden and not try to eat anything. <laughs> uh, let's see. Here is some blue-eyed grass. I think this is the dwarf variety. And this is the, the dwarf variety is more like a purple color. And the uh, not dwarf, regular size, <laughs> is actually blue. And uh, it will have flowers on it in, well, it's still supposed to, but I think it has some transplant shock. So uh, maybe in the spring, it'll have those little blue flowers that I love. And I have a couple different milkweed. Is narrow leaf, uh, world milkweed. This is a strawberry plant. And there's some liatris right here. First year liatris that will hopefully bloom next year. Um, and this vine right here is a Carolina jessamine. It has the yellow uh, bell type flowers in the spring and I'm hoping that it will also climb on this fence. This is the pineapple sage. It's in bloom. Hummingbird favorite there. Have a cone flower here. It hasn't bloomed, which is weird because its neighbor is blooming. There's some daylilies here. My climbing rose still has not bloomed. I do not know why. This, these are some of the spent um, coneflower blooms. This is black and blue salvia, being loved by the bumblebees right now. I, d I bought some mums. They were on sale for six dollars and three dollars. This one is the mm, purple, uh, purple something, and this one is five alarm red. They're gonna be perennial. So I still don't know what this palm right here is, but I'm not, I'm going to take it in for the winter, so I'm not going to let it freeze again, and uh, we'll see what it is, what it looks like next year. Uh, that's the Gomprina, and that's Creeping Jenny that is hanging down. The Lady of the Night, Epiphyllum cactus, is, um, it's, it's blooming, you know, it's got a couple of blooms on it every couple of days. Here's one that's going to be blooming probably a day or two. And it comes, it gets these little, these little fruits on it. You can see these little pink fruits. They are edible if you are into that kind of thing. I am not. And the pitcher plant is doing good. This will also come in the house for the winter. This picture over here got uh, 
got a little crispy in the heat, but it is making new ones, you can see. The pothos doing good as always. You okay, Sunday? We good? This is my succulents. They're growing along since we planted them um, maybe a couple, maybe about a month ago. The uh, jacaranda. Jacaranda's got some new growth on it. The monstera, loving the cooler temperatures. It's go, it's, oh my gosh, I gotta get a bigger pot for that. I don't know what's up with the Japanese maple. I think it's just too hot. I'm not sure if I can grow those here. Those succulents also doing great. And the mariner is kalanchoe. They're it's beginning to do its little its little turn. The top the top leaves do a little turn and then that's how you know they're about to bloom because they'll put out a little a little chandelier type of bloom. And uh, like this one, you see that the bloom's gonna come out right there. And you can tell because the little leaves are smaller and they're just tilted a little bit. They're not like upright as, as upright as those ones. So pretty exciting. Over here, I have um, an agapanthus, I have a pink daisy, I have a white shasta daisy. This is a heal all plant or a self heal plant. Um, it's an herb and uh, it has purple flowers. It has some medicinal benefits, but uh, I'm growing it because it is native and pretty. And this one is a bat face kufia. It is uh, re recovered from its transplant, from its being cut. And I think you can see here, I think you can see here, uh, yeah, here's a little sprout and there's another little sprout right here. That is um, the, uh, there's a couple of bulbs that my neighbor got me and it is the, uh, they're in the gladiolas family. I'm going to have to look them up again. I'll put the name on the screen. but. They're like fragrant and um, um, I'll have to, I mean, I can't remember that, that name, but they're supposed to be very pretty and I thought they were all dead. And uh, so I planted them just to, just to see if they might come up. I planted about 10 of them and two of them are coming up. So pretty excited. Over here. Uh, in this pot is the Morgan Prina, of course. I just love the color. And, you know, with purples, you can't really get the purple to show up on a camera as good as it, like, it's just, um, it's almost fluorescent kind of color. And in here is some milkweed. I have an ornamental pepper. Um... A dianthus. Here's another ornamental pepper. All the flowers have gone, so it's about to put out all of its little uh, white peppers that turn orange and then red, and then they kind of just shrivel up. But uh, my Marisu Trillo Rose, um, I think it's, uh, I think maybe it is suffering from uh some kind of fungus or something to do with uh moisture it's probably what it is but it does have new growth on it i don't know mm, it's i don't know that much about roses but hopefully it makes it over here is my uh hydrangea it's looking good Still got a couple of little crispy spots on it, but it's got a whole bunch of new shoots 
and uh, I think it should look really good in the spring. And these around here are daylilies, and that's a pinta, and that's a dianthus. Here's some amaryllis. Here is a native hibiscus and a rose mallow. I think it will have white flowers with a pink center. And uh, this is my mandevilla that is pink. It's got some new growth. It's got some new buds on it. Very exciting. On this side of the fence, I have some gourds. When the stem turns brown, I will take these off and uh, dry them for mm, about six months. And uh, then next year we can paint them. But I think I told you over here when I was removing the uh, ditch lilies, this is where I put one of them. And I put the, never mind my shadow, but I put two more over there to kind of hide the air conditioning unit. Uh, so. They will grow there, and then as I keep removing them from over there, I'm gonna put, I think, one more there and a few more along the, or along here, because I wanna make sure that this area keeps covered. Um, because in the drought, you know, your house can, can your foundation can be uh, damaged if you don't keep it moist. Come on, Jax. There's some succulents, some kalanchoe as well. Over here is the red Turk's cap. Another native hibiscus here and some rose milkweed. And the coleus just looking great. This is also a Turk's cap. Just so royal looking. Okay, I removed the cannas. I know I shouldn't have planted them, but uh, they were too tall. They're ugly. I mean, the foliage is beautiful, but the but I don't like how the foliage looks whenever the flowers are spent. It just looks ratty. And the white ones, they bloom prolifically enough where you can kind of be okay with it but the orange ones they do not so um and they grew so aggressively that i don't think that i would have been able to control them after another year so they had to go um i but i kept the yellow ones they're a dwarf variety and they're not so aggressive and um they kind of bring a brightness to the area that has like a lot of dark colors so not bad and uh this one this is a um I think it's an ice cream banana it has it has a dessert kind of name ice cream or cheesecake or something like that but it's a banana and i think it's a dwarf and this is another native hibiscus um uh i think i'll put the name on the screen but i think it's halman or halbert something like that leafed uh hibiscus and uh it should have some white flowers with a pink center as well and over here in this pot okay so if you watch my previous videos you'll remember that over here i had a um a native plant that was uh that had some circular holes in it and um it was from the bees the native leaf cutter bees you know taking using it and um so i was really curious about what kind of plant it was and I looked it up and it turns out it was a hackberry tree which don't really grow around here so I'm fairly certain that a bee I mean a bird uh, planted it in the garden so uh, those things get like a hundred feet tall and are very large trees and I just don't have enough room for that so I put it in a pot and I will be giving it away probably to someone in my family and uh but it's a living maybe i'll keep it here for a couple of years until it just gets too big and then i'll give it away but that's that's where i put it uh for now i gotta go get some more potting soil and i'll make it a better home in this bigger pot but that's what happened there and over here Jax is doing his morning inspection of the um 
this bed which has Russian sage this is Russian sage it has some purple flowers um, it has purple flowers when it's blooming this is a pomegranate tree and it looks like it might be I don't know if that looks like new growth or if that looks like some buds but anyway uh, there is daylily here a daylily there there's one over here too and a couple over here this one is a blue daze this one is a Texas sage and I have a pink skull cap here and encroaching on it is a Budlia. So I really love this bed, but um, next year I think it's really going to be in its full glory whenever it's nice and big. But, all right, here's the guava tree. I don't see any signs of fruit still, but it does have new growth everywhere. I'm really hoping I'm gonna have to move this to the uh, to the to the garage but I'm really hoping by next year I can plant it in the ground and then maybe it'll maybe it'll survive at least the root will and maybe it can come up from the ground every year but here's a pineapple and in the back there is a moringa tree yeah. but uh, that is that is basil of thyme oregano um, this is the, another Lady of the Night, and it has a some kind of sorrel in it. It's pink. It looks really, really pretty in the springtime whenever the sorrel is blooming and the Lady of the Night foliage is nice and, um, you know, not beaten up by the heat. Have more basil. These are all basils. I'm keeping them in a, keeping it around for the bees to have something since I cut down the zinnias. And, uh, I do have peppers. I think, I don't even know what kind of pepper these are. I think they're pepperoncinis or maybe they're wax peppers, but they do got a little spice on them. There are, there's some garlic planted around here. There is another YouTube channel that I watch. It's called, um, Breathe the Plant Lady. And she gave, gives the idea that, uh, if you plant garlic um, around um, your beds or your garden or whatever, it um, repels rodents. And I have a huge, huge mole problem around in my garden. Um, it's, they're, you know, those little animals, they don't even have eyes. They just dig and they eat worms and stuff. And whenever they're making their little tunnels, they destroy all of the roots of everything. Um, and I think that that's why my peppers haven't produced like that much. And I think that that's why I had such terrible luck with my tomatoes last year. But, uh, so I planted garlic. I planted it in a row here in a row along this edge. And I planted one row right here. So maybe next year I can plant something here and the moles won't destroy it. And I also wanted to show you this lady right here. Maybe you can see it. Definitely. That is a green garden spire. This garden spider with a massive egg sac that will be <laughs> little spiders that will be helping me with my pest control next year lemons new growth they're loving the new the the cooler temperatures this one got a little crispy in the transplant but they're both making it all right and i'll just end it today with my favorite view from uh my perspective over here whenever i'm sitting on the Whenever I'm sitting on the porch, this is my favorite place to look at the moment. I think in the springtime, it might be on this area, but in the fall, I definitely like the look of it over here. But uh, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one. Don't forget, like and subscribe. A burp gardener. Thanks.